I got Walmart's $20 boot that's suspiciously similar to the Bluntstones in a lot of ways. So that we can kind of compare a $20 boot to a $200 boot and see what the price difference gets you and at a boot of 10 times the price, if it's 10 times the quality, if it's 10 times as comfortable, if it's 10 times better. In the last video, we compared the regular Chuck Taylor Converse to the Chuck 70s, the higher quality version. I wanna start doing some more comparisons so we can kind of give some context to price points and quality points to boots. Um, and then upcoming videos that we have, we've got the all white, AJ1s so that when we do those thousand dollar shattered backboards we have something to compare them to and then some of my personal favorite boots that these are not the ones we're going to cut in half these are my personal ones but we're going to be doing limbs pretty soon I love these boots so if you haven't liked and subscribed and commented or done everything else that the YouTube demands of its viewers to help the channels out consider doing it because it makes a huge difference and now let's get to the Camden Rocks. So to give you a little information on what these boots are, the company's Camden Rock. The model of boot is Marshall and the color they come in is brown. They also come in black. So now let's do a little side by side comparison of these two before we cut them in half because there's a lot of stuff we can kind of glean from these two boots without cutting them in half. Uh, let's start with the upper. So the Camden Rocks are a synthetic leather upper, which basically means it's a fake leather. There's no actual leather uh, fibers in this at all. It's just all like fabric and plastics and stuff. Versus the Bluntstones is a full grain leather upper. And if you want to see a more thorough breakdown of the different types of Bluntstones, I've got two videos on those that, will, that talk more about the leather. Next, if we go to the Goring, which is a side elastic, you would think there wouldn't be a whole lot of difference between elastic on the sides here, but the Camden Rocks is like really weak elastic. You know, this is gonna wear out pretty quick. It doesn't hold its uh, structure as well compared to the Blundstones. This is a pretty hard elastic to pull apart. So the Blundstones are gonna last a lot longer. It's a better elastic goring on the side here. And then if we go to the inserts, so the Camden Rocks, they have a really low density foam it's really wide open celled foam. It's, there's not a whole lot of structure to it. It's not gonna last as long as a better foam versus the Blundstones. It's more of a medium density foam. It's a lot tighter cell foam. And you've also got this little patch of poron on the heel, which is a higher quality foam that absorbs shock a lot better. So a lot better insole on the Blundstones as well. And then for the liner of these two boots, so the Camden Rocks have this fabric liner. It's kind of like a fake wool liner. I doubt it's wool. And then the Blundstones have a nice leather liner. And then if you look at the cross section near the toe area, there's more of that felted fabric for the liner. And then the biggest difference between these two boots is gonna come in the sole. So on the Camden Rocks, you've got, a, I think, a single layer of EVA foam versus the Blundstones, you've got a dual compound sole with a thinner layer of TPU on the outsole and then a thicker layer of PU on, in the midsole. So I'm gonna explain a little bit more of the difference between those two different types of sole materials so you can have a more in-depth understanding of why you'd want one versus the other and why one's cheaper and why one's more expensive. Starting with the EVA foam on the Camden Rocks, EVA foam is a super popular sole material for running shoes and just shoes in general. Um, some of the pros of it is that it's really lightweight, it's really affordable, and it's pretty comfortable, it's really squishy. Some of the cons of it, you kind of, you, you sacrifice that, the durability for the comfort, and it wears out really fast. And the millions of little teeny error cells in this type of foam, after you start to wear them and, and stand in them all day, those cells start to break down and compress and they don't spring back as, as well as other foam soles. So now if we compare that to the Blundstones, the layer of PU midsole is similar to the EVA because it's a foam with millions of little teeny cells, but it's made up of a different compound that the pros of the PU is it's a little bit more resistant to collapsing of the cells. It lasts longer but it's a little bit heavier and they probably wear at a similar rate. The PU might last a little bit longer. So that's why Blundstone put a layer of TPU on the outsole. 
because the TPU isn't, it doesn't have little air bubbles like a regular foam does. It's more of a, more of like a solid plastic type feel and it's a lot more resistant to wear. It has a lot more grip and it doesn't, it doesn't shed off layers kind of like a foam does. So that's why you've got a dual compound sole on the Blundstones because you get the comfort of the PU foam combined with the traction and durability of the TPU outsole. And as for my initial wear impression of these, they were actually really comfortable right off the bat. I was surprised at how comfortable they were. They were probably even more comfortable than the Blundstones the first day of wearing them. That's because it's a little bit softer foam sole, so they probably won't be as comfortable for as long, but they're pretty comfortable right off the bat. And the other thing is they look really similar to a Blundstone. The sole you can tell is very much inspired by the Blundstones. They have a similar silhouette to the Blundstones. So to the untrained eye, you'd probably think these are Blundstones until they start wearing in and this fake leather starts cracking and crumbling. But to really tell the difference between these two boots, we're gonna cut it and cut this one in half to see what's inside. I wanna know if it's got a shank. I wanna know if there's multiple layers going on in the sole and how the upper is attached to the sole. So let's cut them in half. Man, I am 0 and 2 the last two videos for a clean cut job. There's a shank in here and it screwed up my cut real bad. So I apologize that I massacred this one, but let's see what's inside. Like I said, there is a shank in here, which is a good sign. Um, but other than that, not a whole lot going on in here. Pretty basic and pretty poor materials. So I'm gonna tear the guts, the rest of the guts out of this thing so we can get a full breakdown of what's going on in here and then we'll compare them side by side and really do an analysis of is this worth, well is this, is this worth 10 times the price of this one? This thing came apart so easy. I ripped this in, I don't know, like 20 seconds. So that's the problem with using a synthetic leather. And we kind of went over this in the Chinese knockoff Doc Martens, where you've got so much plastic stuff on top when it's glued to the sole, it separates the plastic from the material underneath instead of separating the glue. And so you're really not relying on how well it's glued to the sole, you're really relying on how well is that top layer of plastic bonded to the synthetic material. Or in the knockoff Doc Martens case, how well is the top coat of paint bonded to that cheap layer of leather. And it's kind of a bummer because I was starting to think that we had a, a budget version of Blundstones that might be kind of worth the, the price. But I would not trust these boots for very long. The position of the shank is a really bad position for a shank because you see this rivet right here? That's right on the middle of your heel. And so as this really cheap insert wears down, you're gonna be standing on this rivet right there. And that's gonna cause a lot of pain because 
this EVA foam is gonna start to compress and fall apart, but that rivet that is attaching the shank to the insole is not gonna compress. So as everything around this shank compresses, that's gonna stay up high and that's gonna start digging into your heel and you'll feel that really high pressure point right at the heel. That's why in, sorry, I gotta move the toaster sitting pad. We are doing that um, really expensive cat bed for toaster eventually. I got a cool sponsor for it, I think, but this whole coronavirus has thrown a bunch of things for a loop. But see how this shank is riveted? It's not right on the heel. It's more towards the forefront of your heel. That way you're never actually standing super heavily on that rivet. So that's something that's really important and that's something that's gonna cause a lot of pain if the whole boot doesn't fall apart first. Now let's do this side-by-side -side comparison of these two starting with the soles. So the Camden Rocks is this really low density EVA foam with a lot of cavities in it. It's gonna wear out really fast and it's gonna be comfortable, comfortable for a little while until it compresses and then you're gonna start feeling that shank and everything. The Blundstones on the other hand, you've got the dual compound sole. It's gonna last a lot longer, it's gonna be comfortable a lot longer and it's just better all around. There's no cavities that are gonna collapse and hurt your feet after a while. Uh, moving up to the insole, the Camden Rocks had a cheap cardboard, compressed cardboard insole. You know, it's gonna do the job, but it's not the greatest thing. Compared to the Blundstones, you've got a lot thicker layer of insole. It's a fiberboard insole, and you've got a little patch of poron right here at the heel. And the shank is placed in a better spot. Then to the upper, so you saw how easily this came apart. So if it was that easy to rip, it's just gonna wear out just as fast, maybe not 20 seconds, but it's gonna wear out a lot faster than the leather because it's not a natural material where all those fibers in the leather are intertwined and locked and give it the strength of leather. It's just a fabric backed, plasticky material. And then to the Blundstone, so this, this isn't the highest quality leather in the world, but it's decent quality and it's gonna last several times longer than a fake leather. You know, if you take care of it and you treat it well and condition it and clean it, it'll last a really long time. It should last longer than the outsole. And we kind of went over the goring and everything in the front, the first part of the video. So when it comes down to it, at 10 times the price is a Blundstone boot 10 times as comfortable. I think in the long run, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable, maybe not 10 times. Will it last 10 times as long? That one's hard to say, you know, but judging from tearing it apart, I think it's gonna last several times longer, especially if you take care of it. But if you're like me, I'd rather buy one thing once than 10 of something else. And for, you know, just an environmental standpoint, if you buy 10 of these, 10 of these are gonna end up in a landfill versus one of these is gonna end up in the landfill and the leather is biodegradable. So keep that in mind too. So are the Blundstones worth 10 times the price of the Camden Rocks? I would say they are, but let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of people can't afford the Blundstone, so if you're on a budget, you know, these will do okay for a period of time, but there's probably better options out there. And if you, if you do know a better, more affordable option to the Blundstones that's not complete garbage, leave them in the comment section and let me know what you thought of this breakdown. Did I miss anything in this breakdown? Um, have you had any experiences with the Camden Rocks or the Blundstones? The comment section is a great resource for people that have had long-term wear-ins of these. So check out the comment section and thanks for all your guys' support. Thanks for all your likes and comments and subscriptions. Um, yeah, thanks for everything. See ya.